Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Vampyr. I think we've got someone we've never spoke to before and I'm kind of looking forward to it. Hello old chap. Good evening sir. May I ask you what you're doing here at this late hour? I'm conducting an investigation about the epidemic in this part of town. And who are you sir? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. May I ask who you are? And why all the questions? I'm Detective Inspector Charles Albright from Scotland Yard. And I don't find your answers convincing. What is a Pembroke doctor doing in the West End at this time of night? <laughs> I work for the Ascalon Club. Here is my permit to go freely about the city. The Ascalon Club? You should have said so, sir. I must warn you, these streets are dangerous, and you'd better be careful. What can you tell me about this district? I'm the one asking questions, especially when there's a killer on the loose. What killer? I'm not going to discuss that with a civilian, sir. Haven't I told you about the investigation I'm conducting? Perhaps I could help you. All right, without giving you too much information, I'll tell you this. I'm convinced there is a homicidal maniac on the loose, using the epidemic to disguise his kills. First of all, if you're a policeman, why in the heck, dude, are you telling me that there was a killer but won't further expand upon that? Because if anything, that just puts more terror into your civilians. And what about the epidemic? We both know the situation is critical, don't we, Doctor? Colleagues of mine die almost every day. What are you really doing here? I told you. I'm a detective inspector from Scotland Yard, investigating suspicious cases in the area. Do you work alone? Yes. The situation is difficult for the police. Many of us are sick, and since the summer strike, most men apply a work to rule on their patrols. What about the situation in the East End? Why are there no police there to protect the civilians? I know, it's a shame, but we just don't have enough men to cover the entire city. Why are you investigating at night? Criminals rarely act in daylight, you know. But since you are also a night worker, have you noticed anything strange, which requires police attention? Jeffrey McCollum. Oh, ho, 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 ho. pre when? No, I've noticed nothing odd. All right, but keep your eyes open though. Tell me all you know about that homicidal maniac you're looking for. I'm not even sure there is only one. The wounds are always the same, but the modus operandi varies. Sometimes violent and brutal, sometimes precise and swift. How could different killers inflict the same wounds? That's my main problem. If my theory is correct, maybe we're facing a group of individuals sharing the same violent tendencies. Perhaps a sadist cult. Huh. What are you investigating, exactly? I have a missing woman, possibly abducted a few nights ago. Louise Teasdale. <laughs> it seems you already found my other missing person, Mr. Tadao Kimura. Tell me about Louise Teasdale. She's a waitress. Her father reported her missing. We don't have enough men to search for her, sadly. Do you have any idea where she could be? No. But I feel she's been abducted. She went to a pub a few nights ago and vanished. I thought about the sewers, but I'm not equipped for such an investigation. I've already found her, mate. <laughs> Do you know anything in particular about a man called Aloysius Dawson? Who doesn't know the man? I think he intervened personally to put an end to the police strike of last August. What else can you tell me about him? Aloysius Dawson is exactly the kind of powerful and influential man who could commit murder and get away with it, with just one phone call. Just in case there were any Do more. You, I, tell, you, no, I can't believe it. Do you need... I'm fine. 
Goodbye. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Hello, ma'am. Good evening, Miss Price. How are you tonight? Dr. Reed, I didn't know you had returned from the war. I had a new doctor when you left, but he's not as kind as you. Always glad to see a former patient in good condition. It's been a long time. Too long indeed. And as a token of my appreciation, I'll grant you the best price if you fancy buying anything from my humble shop. What can you tell me about yourself, Miss Price? I'm still managing my shop. The only difference is, since the quarantine, we're open at night. You, on the contrary, seem to have changed a lot. How so? Really? Have I changed that much? It must have been the war and the night shifts since my return. Don't get me wrong, Dr. Reed, you're still handsome. Just what? maybe a little bit wiser, more serious. Okay, I can't get a two-person two shot. Tell me more about yourself. No new fiancé? I remember you were hoping to get remarried. I'm sure you must have a few suitors. Who would marry an old bat like myself with a grown daughter and a little business? As you know, I only fancy handsome men like yourself. Damn, we got some Have mystery here. Have you noticed here. anything in particular in this part of town recently? Other than you coming back to cheer me up? Nothing at all, Dr. Reed. Do you know Aloysius Dawson? Everybody knows him. He's only been to my shop once, though, looking for rare books and other intriguing antiques. Did he buy something from you? No, he left quickly. He almost laughed at my goods. Mr. Dawson may be a rich man, but you can't buy good manners. But isn't Aloysius Dawson known for his philanthropy? That was before his brother Robert died in an aeroplane crash. Since then, the remaining twin has turned into a heartless tycoon. Does your daughter still worry you, Miss Price? I remember you were often concerned about her health when she was younger. Have you not seen Carol since you returned? She's almost a young woman now, but she'll always remain my sweet little baby. So you're less afraid? Some things never change. Carol is still too clumsy for her own good. Sometimes her innocence puts her in real danger. Please don't let that woman that's obsessed with eating rats be Carol. Why would her innocence put her in danger? She does not realize how cruel life can be. Maybe I was a bad mother to protect her too much. My poor dear Carol. You have every reason to be cautious, Miss Price. Especially in these difficult times. Maybe you could talk with her, Dr. Reed. It would be nice to have a man here more often. We would both feel safer. May I look at your good? It's always a... Aluminium. Are these cheaper than normal? Where's this check? Isn't this where I just came from? It is. What do you mean unknown? Dude, I've spoken to her in the last episode. Why are you saying she's unknown? Oh my god, I'm gonna have to talk to her again. Dude. Come on now. Why is she just hanging out in her cell as well? What's going on? I have questions. She's still in there. Oh, now her neck. You have a headache, ma'am. May I take care of that for you? You should. Thank you for your sympathy. What? Goodbye, Miss. 
You should return to a safer place. Thank you for your sympathy, Doctor. But I recently learnt to stare horror in the face. Dude, she's got a headache. I want to... Goodbye, Miss... Life. Right, how many people have we got? We've got loads in this area that we need to meet, so... I've still got... Five. Six. Hmm... What is all that blood? Turn around, sir. Hmm. No, I'm good. Oh! Talking to you! Oh, you got me. Oh, I was hoping there'd be more here. Nothing shining? Really? Fair play. Oh, where am I? There we go, I've unlocked it. Fantastic. Yum. He's having a nice little meal. We'll leave him alone. Okay. Oh no, Save it's one the of them. To be than here. Over yeah, there, there is. There's one of them. Ah! It's not you. Ah! Ah! Lord, give us strength. Have... Ah! 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 Run out. Oh, stamina again. Ugh. Dude! Does he sap my stamina? Is that what that is? I see no presence here. Really? Oh. I mean, I haven't met everyone. Dude, this is a bad decision, I feel. I don't want to go in there. Can't see any hearts in the area, so let's just do it. Dawson, where's Dawson's Jerry? Dawson's mansion. Here I am at last. But the question remains: Am I ready to make a dying man my progeny? No. So I don't know why we're here, to be fair. See in there. Oh. Oh, it flashes just as I go past it. <laughs> I 
mistakes have been made, I feel. I swear to God he didn't want to become one. It's locked. This is going to be the choice that screws up the neighborhood, isn't it? Mm. I'm uncomfortable. I mean, it's a lovely home, but again, do you need this much space? waiting for me like one of my French girls. Okay. Oh, this is such a bad decision. Finally you're here, Dr. Reed. What took you so long? I had to pass several of your barricades and outposts to access your mansion, sir. Death, pestilence surround us, and time is against me. I see you've gathered some of the most expensive, albeit experimental, blood transfusion equipment available. All this could be so useful in a hospital. Yes, yes. Since Lord Redgrave sent me a doctor to perform my conversion, I thought you might find some of these devices useful. Most thoughtful. But tonight I'm not here as a physician. But I feel reassured that a specialist such as yourself would help me to escape the Reaper. Very well. But before I proceed, I have a few questions for you. If you must, but be quick, for I don't have much time left in this life. First of all, I need to be sure that you know exactly what is going to happen to you, sir. I can assure you I'm as informed as any man can be. I have planned for this moment, Dr. Reed. Planned very carefully. Sir, I'm going to end your life. Do you not wish to discuss the procedure for even a minute? I don't have a minute to indulge in idle chatter. I can't feel my legs and the cold, so cold. I will become your maker. Do you understand what that means? Well, I certainly won't consider you my liege or some such drivel. You can be assured of that. You'll need to feed on warm blood. Blood from mortals. How do you feel about that? I'm rich, Dr. Reed, and powerful. I'm sure I'll be able to acquire all the blood I need without ever having to sully my own hands. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? What I do know is that I'll crush anyone or anything that would dare to oppose me. Oh wow, it's like, who wants to be a millionaire? It's a 50-50 choice. Just now he sold me, I was like, okay, if you're gonna do it that way, then that's fair enough. But then, he's gonna... Let's move on then. Please, I'm cold and tired. I feel my life waning with every moment. But first, before you embrace immortality, what would you do with such a gift? That's a rather impertinent question, Dr. Reed. And I will do as I please. Answer me all the same. What will your first action be as an immortal? To save London. I will finance the most efficient quarantine ever seen. I will build a wall that will separate the sick boroughs from the healthy ones. Who gave you the right to decide the fate of thousands of people? My money. My money and my pending immortality gives me the needed authority, Doctor. I'm a businessman. I'm used to tough decisions. It's just whenever they try and point these things out in games, they are always so... cartoonish. People don't think this way. It frustrates me. I mean, I'm sure some do, but it's never 
the opposite of this storyline, let's be honest. It's always the most like cartoonish kind of villains. You really plan to build a quarantine wall across London? Yes, it will be tall and strong, separating the wheat from the chaff. Chaff? Grenade? By doing so, you will also create two separate prisons. Come, sir. An eminent doctor like yourself knows that such radical measures have proved efficient in the past. Let me guess. You mean to isolate the rich from the poor. This is a desperate measure for desperate times. England must prevail, Doctor, no matter the cost. I thought he said the sick from the healthy. That doesn't necessarily mean rich from poor. Quarantine is not a bad idea, medically speaking, but I'm convinced this epidemic will not be contained by mere walls. As long as the right people are on the right side of the wall, that's all that matters. But you can't guarantee infection will not spread. Just one contagious carrier would be enough to create an apocalypse. The apocalypse is already knocking at the gate. We must be strong now. What if a new outbreak happens inside your walls? You'll have created a giant trap. That won't happen. As long as we dispose of anyone that is contaminated as soon as they are spotted. I've heard enough. It's time to proceed. At last. All right, do what you have to do. If it hurts, so be it. I've been preparing such a long time for this. You sacrifice 2,000 XP if you turn him. <gasps> I'm missing a hint. Oh no, I'm missing a hint. You can't do that. You can't wait till this last moment to tell me that. I would have waited. Oh, life. I'm not turning him. There's only one option. This area's screwed. You don't deserve immortality, Mr. Dawson. What? What are you prattling on about? I don't believe I've ever met a man so bereft of empathy. You, sir, are despicable. No! Wait! You can't! I made a deal with Lord Redgrave. I'll finance whatever he wants. Please, just ask him. Sleep now. Rest now. Forever. I regret that decision, but I wouldn't have been happy with the other one either. I would have lived forever. Who are you to decide my fate? How's he Who talking? Gave you the authority? Yeah, I screwed that. I'm upset. I didn't I didn't want to I mean it sounds like a coward's way, but I would have taken the option to let him die, but I was trying to talk his ear off essentially. So there's there's another safe here? Where? Gotta be in here, right? I'm upset.
I don't think we have a fourth key, do we? Where's the exit? Oh no, I've got a bit of a problem. Okay, let's end the episode on a really positive note. Why are you here, sir? Is it done, Dr. Reed? Is Aloysius Dawson reborn as expected? Alas, Aloysius Dawson was not brought back to life after his death. The man is gone. What? What happened? He fell. He didn't survive the procedure. He was too weak. This is unacceptable, nevertheless. You were given the simplest task. Well, get rid of me then. From now on, you're an outcast. Banished. You are forbidden to ever appear in front of us again. Ascalon will smite you on sight, and your heart will be thrown to the rats. I'll leave you then. Have fun with your puppets and shadow plays, Lord Redgrave. Yes, go, traitor, and take that awful creature, that counterfeit of a woman I saw waiting for you, and be gone! Uh-oh. <laughs> Honestly, Jonathan, I don't know what I punched him for that comment, but, you know. Each to their own. What would you guys have done in that situation? I mean, obviously the hint was the better... Hold on. That isn't my redhead. Is that the... You're out of the sewers? We meet again at the strangest of times, young Econ. So do you serve the Earl of Bristol now? Old Bridget? What are you doing here? Your friend, the wise Econ. She sent me to warn you. Did anyone see you? It's a long way from the dock sewers, and hunters are patrolling the streets here. Who said I took the streets? How do you think I survived for centuries in this city without ever being seen? I know all her secrets. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? She came to us in the sewers in search of answers. Just as you did. What kind of answers did you give her? I knew nothing of your maker, but we talked. We talked a lot. Her words and ideas are captivating. It is no surprise that you like her. I like her too. Back off. <laughs> Lady Ashbury in the sewers. Now that's a sight I wish I'd seen. She said she was your friend, and that she sought the identity of your maker. So I answered her questions. What's going Lady on? Ashbury. You know her. Tell me what's going on. The lady approached me but a few nights ago, wanting to meet the sewer skulls. Once she questioned Harriet Jones, she agreed to help us. Harriet Jones is still with you then? How is she doing? Harriet remains angry, but is recovering slowly. Her mind is twisted, but at least her body is healing. Tell me what is going on. The lady asked us to keep an eye on your mortal doctor friend while you were away. We spotted the hunters. They were discussing plans to attack tonight. And I think now is the perfect time to end the episode here. Nice little cliffhanger there. We're approaching the half an hour mark, so that's perfect timing. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far, and I hope to see you in the next one where we will have many questions. Many questions for old Bridget.